Here's Purple Ace by Jimi Hendrix. Here we go. All right, so let's go for the very first bit. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this song, it's an idea just to go and give it a listen on YouTube. Jimi Hendrix, Purple A's. All right, so it starts with some a dissonant sort of sounding thing and then goes into the nice riff. So this goes... So you play that six and the eights four times. So I'll just look at the first one. So to get the sixes... I would bar them two sixes like that and just play them both together like that. And then the eights, I'd use my little finger pressed on the middle strings. If you notice, it is the same notes, but an octave higher. And I'm not holding them on like that and going... You've got to do one, then the other what will happen is when you do the next one it'll cut the other one off because you always start with one finger down okay so that's the intro the very start of the intro and then let's go to the the main riff so this is quite difficulty about this is just skipping strings so you start on the nine the seven then the eight and then you jump to the seventh fret on the fourth string again so you've got three notes here, seven, eight, and nine. So you want one finger to one fret. So there's anything on the seventh fret, your first finger. Anything on the eighth fret, that one. Anything on the ninth fret, your third finger. So you can go through this riff at ease. Okay, so the first note is nine on the fourth string. So use your third finger for that. And then move down a string and go to the seventh fret. That's on the third string down another string and go to the eighth fret so you use your second finger for this and then back up to the fourth string for the seventh fret so you'd use your first finger for that so i'll show you that a bit up close so there with your the ninth fret then your first finger here on the seventh then your second finger here and then back up to the fourth string with your first finger. See that? So just play it around a few times and get it under your fingers. Uh, skipping strings is always a little bit difficult. Okay, then we go down to the fifth fret. This is on the fourth string. See, we ended on the fourth string there. So we just move down two frets to the five and pull it off to the zero. Now, because it's a pull-off, you don't have to go fast. You don't have to go... Hold the five, then pull it off. And hit the zero on the top string. And then on the fifth string, hit the fifth fret and slide to the seventh. Like that. So you got... I'll show you what that looks like. So you got to keep the pressure down on the five and keep the pressure down to the seven, but fast. See, I'm not lifting it off at any point. It's... So you got move it down two frets. So that five, don't just lift it off. You got to pluck it with this finger. Okay, and if you notice on the music, I'll show you now, it does that sequence there twice. So it's twice. Okay, 
so practice that twice do it slower than that uh, okay so the next bit goes seven five seven so you start on the fifth string on the seventh fret use your third finger for that because you need your first finger for the next note the five which is on the string below five seven so get that nice little so fifth string fourth string and then you hit the seven again and you slide it to the nine so and then the next note after that is a five so okay so practice that and then this little cluster of notes you go to the five zero again you're already on the five so hit it again five zero zero three on the top so i'll play you that five zero zero again zero three okay so the last bit of this opening riff is here so it starts off the same with a seven five seven so do that again and then you do the seven nine slide but this time instead of hitting on the five there like before it hits a seven so that's the one little difference so slide to the nine from the seven and then hit the seven so that goes and then you do a five zero again just after that so i'm going to show you the last little bit of this line so you're on the fourth string and you go seven nine hammer so just because it's a hammer don't have to go quick like you hit the seven and then you hammer on the nine and then move down a string hit the seven hit the seven again and then hammer on the nine so i'll show you what that looks like you're probably thinking why are you doing hammer ons well, if I played it without it, it'd be like. You see, it seems a bit robotic, like da 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 da. And doing hammer-ons and pull-offs makes it a bit smoother. So I'll I'll do the two side by side. Oh. See, it's just a bit smoother when you're uh, hammering on. So that uh. so we'll get into the chord now so it's an e7 sharp 9 it's this it's kind of a jazzy chord people call it the Hendrix chord because he used it quite a lot in songs so first finger is on the sixth fret there on the fourth string the second finger is here on the seventh fret on the string above so you got that sort of shape that you do with a G there so you do a G there so there so that's on the seventh fret and then this third finger is parallel to this uh, second finger, which is on the third. Sorry, it's on the same fret, the seventh fret. And then you've got this little finger on the eighth fret. That's on the second string. I'm going to show you what that chord looks like if you're into reading the boxes. Here we go. So you can see your first finger's there. Second one's diagonally up there on the seventh fret. Then this third finger is parallel on the seventh fret, and your fourth finger moves over to the eighth fret there. So you've got that. Now, because this is an E7 sharp nine, your root here will work as well. So, but to simplify that, you can go and then go to a G power chord. So 
the power chord is a uh, is used a lot in rock music. If you if you get that chord, you can play like literally thousands of rock songs. It's just that one shape, and it's moved around the fretboard. So the name of it is depending on where you start, what note you are. So to do a power chord, put your first finger on the top there on the third fret. And this is going to be a G power chord because that's a G. And then you put your, on the next string, put your little finger on the fifth fret. So there's a fret gap in between. And just pluck the, the top two strings. Now normally in chords you're hooking your fingers around always to get it sounding clean. But on a power chord you're better off flattening your fingers so you can mute these strings below so when you strum the top strings you can actually strum them all and these ones are muted but that's quite a harder technique so just flatten your fingers and you'll feel that over time but just if you're having a problem just pluck the strings you want and then move it up to the fifth fret so that's G there up two frets that's an A on the fifth fret. And it goes around on that a lot and then it stops. Excuse me while I kiss the sky. And it goes. Right, and I'm just going to show you that last little riff and then, then we're done for this uh, section. Okay, so here we go. So on the fifth string you go nine seven five. You can do octaves if you know what octaves are. Or you just stick to the single notes. And then you go. If you notice, this is the opening riff, just the first three notes done twice. So. So I'll show you what that looks like. So. Nine, seven, five, all the dots. That's on the fifth string. And then. Maybe playing octaves is something we need to do in another lesson. All right, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye bye.